Alright guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at how to add a live system into the game so that you can die more than once at the moment we run into an asteroid and we get game over right away, which isn't particularly great, right? So we're going to do this in more or less the same sort of way we set up the score system, whereby we're going to track a variable inside an object. Uh, we're going to track a number just to see how many lives we have. We'll set it to like 2. And every time you crash into an asteroid, we'll check to see if the number is above 0. If the number is above zero, we reduce it by one and respawn the player. And if it's not above zero anymore, then we present you with this game over screen. Okay? It's gonna be really, really simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come into obj underscore score. I could use a new object for this. Um, like I could make obj underscore lives, like we usually do. We usually make a new object for each thing. But given obj underscore score is already an invisible object tracking our score variable, it makes sense to just do the lives inside of this object as well, right? And then we don't have to make a whole new object. So inside of obj underscore score, in the create event, uh, I'm going to open up this uh, execute code. Oh, I'm going to make this bigger quickly as well for you. There we go, that should be a little bit easier for you to read now. Um, here in the, in the create event where we set up global.points before, we're just going to set up a new variable, global.life. I could say lives, but you see that turns red because lives is a built-in global variable that you could use for this and totally would work out as well. But I'd like to teach you guys about how to use different types of variables and stuff like that. So we're going to go with making our own custom one for this. So I'm going to say global life equals two. So let me call on. Uh, and that's that for there. Just as how we set up points to be zero at the start of the game, we set up life to be two at the start of the game. Okay. Let's go ahead and close that. Then the next thing we want to do is actually draw the number of lives we have at any given time to the screen, yeah? So I'm going to go into the draw event now, uh, where we were drawing our points before. And I can copy this line of text here, and instead of drawing it at 64 by 32, we'll draw it at 64 by 64, so it draws just under. And instead of drawing global.points, we're going to draw global.life, okay? Now if I run that, we should see just another number pop up on the screen, right? So we have zero there, and we have two just underneath it. But at the moment it doesn't do anything when we die, or it doesn't do anything full stop, it's just the number two, right? So I'll go ahead and close that. The next thing we want to do is set it up so that your lives actually reduce when you collide with an asteroid. So we'll open up asteroid now where we collided eh, where we had our collide with OBJ underscore player event. Go ahead and open up that code action. You'll remember all of this from before. Now, we still want to do all this stuff where we create like the explosion effect for the player, but instead of just always creating the game over state, what we're going to do is we're just going to create um, a check to see whether or not we actually have any lives. So I'm going to say if um, global.life, because it's a global, we can refer to it in a different object, even though this isn't obj underscore score anymore, is greater than zero. Okay. And if global life is greater than zero, then what we want to do is say global dot life minus equals one. Okay, minus equals is just another way of me writing global dot life equals global dot life minus one, but it's just a faster way to subtract a number from another number. Okay, I can't remember if I covered that before. But either way, so we're going to reduce the number of lives by one, and then we're going to create the player again. So instance underscore create. Um, room width over 2 for the x coordinate, so in the middle, room height over 2, again, divide, just the room height divided by 2, so in the middle of the room, obj underscore player. Now some of, some of you may have noticed a little problem with what I'm doing here, but um, we'll be covering that soon, so don't worry. So if our lives are above 0, then we reduce our lives by 1, and uh, create a new player object. Else. So if lives are not greater than zero anymore, and we just wrap that instance create game over inside of that else statement. So now, if our lives are above zero, we lose a life and make the player again, and if our lives are not above zero, uh, we create the game over state, and this is what gets checked every single time we, um, we crash into an asteroid. So if I go ahead and run that game now, see I start with two lives in the corner there, if I run into this, it goes down to 1, to 0, and then it's no longer greater than 0, so I get the game over screen. Okay? So, 
What we want to do now is it kind of looks a bit dumb just seeing those two numbers and we don't know which one is which anymore. So we want to put some text in front of them so we can see um, whether or not w w which is the score and which one is our lives, yeah? So I'm going to go back into obj underscore score now and back into the draw event uh, where we had this, where we were drawing the text global.points and global.life. So if we just want to use draw text to draw a number, like we have been doing, it's fine to just put that number in the space where we would normally put a string. And if we want to just draw a string, we can just write like a piece of text inside of quotation marks. Um, if we want to combine the two, however, um, we need to be careful about what GameMaker recognizes as what type of data. Okay, If you just give it one value, it'll automatically convert it to a string, but otherwise you need to use the string function, if I type it in, string, you can see it turns yellow, to turn like regular numbers and variables into the string format, which is a format of variable, which is just a piece of text, arbitrary, right? As in the text of 12 is not the same as the value 12, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all have a string of draw text score, a colon, and then a space, just so we leave a gap, and then plus string open bracket global dot points. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste that line, change that to 64 again, making sure we've got the right number of brackets on everything as well, and change that to lives. And instead of drawing global dot points, draw global dot life. Okay, now if we run that, you should see what happens. Uh, it now says score zero and lives two in the top corner. And you can see it all still works as before, but now we have that nice little label showing us what's going on. Now, the only remaining problem. Um, with this is our respawn system is theoretically if an asteroid were passing through the center where we wanted our player to respawn um, then the player would respawn and instantly die on that asteroid over and over and over again. Now for the sake of keeping videos in this series relatively short and focused on individual topics I'm going to be covering the whole um, respawning invincibility stuff uh, next part then we'll be looking at adding a few more finishing touches and really wrapping up this first game so yeah, I hope you're enjoying this so far. Uh, any comments, suggestions, or whatever, just leave them below as you always do. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.